Hey, do you know the leading cause of death for 10 to 29 years old in Singapore is suicide? With 378 people taking their own lives in 2021, that's more than one a day. Hello, my name is Dr. Liao and this is Dr. Ong. We are your Singlai Lifesaver, here to help you find a better way to manage your health. In each episode, we answer questions from Singaporeans about health and today, we'll be talking about mental health. According to the Singapore Association for Mental Health, mental illness is a disturbance of the mind that impairs the way we think, feel and behave. It affects our daily activities as well as impact the lives of family members and friends. Mood and anxiety disorder are the most common mental illnesses. A nationwide study by the Institute of Mental Health concluded that one in seven Singaporeans have experienced a mood or anxiety disorder at some point of their lives. Despite the prevalence, people with mental illness still face considerable stigma and discrimination and are reluctant to seek help or treatment. We have searched the internet for your question about mental health. Stay tuned to find out the answer. And don't forget to click like and subscribe for more. Hey, Dr. Ong, what is the difference between depression and sadness? How do I know I am sad or I'm depressed? Well, that's a very interesting question. So I think it's important to differentiate between sadness, which is temporary, an emotional state, mm -hmm. versus depression, which is prolonged, and what we call a clinical diagnosis. So in sadness, we experience it all the time when something unfortunate has happened in our lives. We tend to have an emotional response of being sad, and that's completely normal. But in the case of depression, uh, most people tend to have a prolonged set of symptoms and this can include things like feeling hopeless, having low self-esteem, having eating problems such as overeating or even undereating. Okay. They could have sleep disturbances such as sleeping too much or even sleeping too little. And at a point of time where their function in terms of social and occupational function is affected, it becomes a clinical diagnosis and at a point in time we would advise to seek professional help. So we have a question um, from the internet. Is anxiety a form of depression or is it a separate entity in itself? Well, I would say that anxiety is in its normal form. It's not really a, anything to be worried about. Like for example, when you go and see your future mother-in-law, you were anxious, right? And then when you are going to take exam, you will also have a lot of butterflies in your stomach. So those are the normal reaction that we human beings will have when we are going to encounter a so-called unknown. So, so those are normal. But when the person has anxiety to the extent whereby it affects his life, like for example, the person is so anxious that he has experienced a palpitation, the heartbeat very far, the sweatiness, the unable to sleep, or to the extent of fearful, you know, and, and, and it becomes preoccupied his or her life, then the anxiety can go into an illness situation. And when a person has that so often, that person needs to get treatment. Because if not, the anxiety can get into a depressive state of mind. Okay, we have another question. Can mental illness really have physical symptoms? Oh yes, uh, most of the time, the mental illness presenting as a physical symptom. Like for example, we talk about the anxious person, right? The anxious person will feel so anxious that he or she cannot cope with daily life. Uh, they are so worried, they can't sleep, they can't eat, and then to the extent that they even may be fearful of going to work and they can't cope with life. So, so actually, a lot of time, the mental illness have a physical representation and subsequently to the very severe one, it affects the mind. The anxiety get into the state of depression, panic attack, and even to the extent of suicidal thought. So yes, the, the, what we call the somatization uh, is a form of representation and presentation of a mental illness in its physical form. Dr. Ong, can a mental illness be stabilised with medication and no treatment? Is it safe? So I think um, firstly it depends on the diagnosis. So in the case of certain conditions like bipolar, and psychosis mm -hmm. disorders. Uh, in those cases, generally, the first treatment is still pharmacological intervention. But of course, with supportive non-pharmacological uh, treatment as well, that includes counselling as, as well as uh, cognitive behaviour therapy. Uh, in the case of depression and anxiety as a diagnosis, um, usually the first line would still be non-pharmacological interventions. So this can include counselling, psychological support, uh, cognitive behaviour therapy. And then subsequently, if really required, medications would then be placed uh, 
as the next line for the patient. So I think medication alone, probably not the most common. Uh, usually therapy as well as medications will probably be the best outcome in the case of more severe conditions. Okay. We have one question that we got it from in the internet. I have a mental health problem and I'm feeling in class. So what should I do? Should I go and tell my professor? Okay, the person must be feeling quite distraught and yes. having a lot of difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, I think the good part is that at least in Singapore right now, um, mental health is a very prevalent issue and brought up a lot, especially after COVID. Mm. So what happens is currently in a lot of the academic centres, especially the universities, okay. we have very strong mental and well-being teams that are supported by counsellors, psychologists, and so the support system for mental health in itself is actually very strong. So my advice to this person would be mm -hmm. to actually um, seek these support within the school, okay. uh, to bring it up to the counsellors, and then to inform the relevant uh, people so that the support system for both the social, psychological, as well as the academic support will be there for the, uh, the patient so that the person will be able to get through school well without having this uh, worry. Here, Dr. Lau, we have an awkward question alert. So someone asked, am I destined to be single for the rest of my life if I have a mental health issue? Oh, that's a very sad thing for this person. However, you should not be sad. Most important thing is, if you do have a mental health condition, get treated. And once you are treated, you can lead just like anybody normal life. Now, as to finding a life partner, sure. Most important thing, with a strike of luck, you find somebody that can support you. Be open, communicate your issue with him or her, and then together you work on the issue. Now, the other things that most people are wondering, can I get married? Can I have children? The answer is yes, because mental condition is not a hereditary or genetic condition. And you can have a relatively normal life. So do not be despair and treat, get well, and may the force be with you. So, what should you do if you are concerned about your mental health or somebody else? One, Health Hub Singapore has a great framework for managing mental health as well as a self-assessment tool to see how you are doing right now. You can find the link in the description below. Two, talk to someone. Everyone struggles at different times in their lives and it can help massively to share the burden. So talk to someone or make yourself available for others to talk to. Three, take some time off to focus on yourself. Life can be so busy, it becomes overwhelming. Sometimes we just need to check out and recenter ourselves. Four, diet and exercise play a crucial part on your physical and mental health. But you can get some distance from your thoughts by practicing meditation. It requires no special equipment, just a few minutes every day and some guidance from a teacher or an app such as Calm, Headspace or Inside Timer. Finally, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel for more life-saving tips for lifesavers.